still see me? All right, I just want to make sure because it is all about me. <laughs> all right. Now, those of you who know me know that I have been forever talking about the candy show. Forever. Right? Forever. <laughs> forever. Because I've been wanting to make this happen forever. And about five years ago, I found myself down at Beerley's one night, which is a bar in Halifax that plays the blues, and I love the blues. And I was playing some pool, I think, and I heard this guy start to sing. And when he started to sing, I thought, well, I'm going to turn around and see myself, some 50-year-old, hard-living man. And I turned around, and I saw this 23-year-old white boy. <laughs> and I couldn't believe what I heard. And it was Charlie Acord. And I said, at that moment, I turned to my partner, Denise, and I said, wouldn't it be amazing if and when I get the candy show, little plug again there, people, um, <laughs> if Charlie Acord could be my musical guest, thinking that would never happen. You know what it's like? You, you see these musicians that really do it for you, and then uh, you have those kind of daydreams? Well, ladies and gentlemen, right here on my makeshift bed with my makeshift bearskin rug, my dream has come true. And joining me on my bed now, ECMA award-winning singer-songwriter, Mr. Charlie Acorn. Yeah. which was an amazing, amazing album. Um, the, probably on my top 10 songs of all time, <laughs> of all time, this includes Led Zeppelin, um, who those of you who know, know that I love Led Zeppelin, um, is When the Night Comes. Yes, it's true. And so I have asked Charlie if at some point before I die, because he never plays, I follow him everywhere to see him play live music, and he never ever plays When the Night Comes. Why is that? Well, I first of all just want to congratulate you on the candy show. Oh, he's a man again! No, you know it's one of those songs. I never ever thought I would have a song that I would think would be uh, would be uh, one of those ones you want to just keep in your back pocket. Uh, you know, because as an artist, you typically you want to share your music, right? Yep. You want to get it out there. And um, I, uh, that's when that comes is definitely a song that. Uh, is one of those ones that you keep in your back pocket. You keep. Uh, it has its own reasons why it was born in the first place, and um, uh, you know, songs are like children. You know, you give birth to these songs. You want them to do well out in the world, 
this, these are one of my children that I just keep in a cage. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, what, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's got a pretty personal uh, vein to it, and, uh, but you know what, you know what, you play your cards right. And, uh, 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 you know, we, we don't wait till my funeral, though. Because I want to be alive when you play it. Well, no, this is true. That would kind of ruin it. Yeah, that, that yeah. certainly <laughs> would. That certainly would. Yeah. Open that casket. I want to see if she likes the music. <laughs> now, this came out four years ago. It took four years before we saw Bring on the Storm, Charlie's newest album, which we're going to talk about in a minute. How hard is it to be in Nova Scotia, Canada, to be a burgeoning you know, musician like yourself with so much talent, and uh, to get your music out there, to get the money together, to, to lay the tracks down, to get the musicians in the studio? You actually, you wouldn't believe how many people you have to sleep with in order to get <laughs> Damn it, I wasn't on that list. <laughs> I got many more albums to come, don't worry. <laughs> There, people can just sign up. And he'll just give us a moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll just slide over. Uh, no, it, this album was uh, definitely a labor of love. Um, it did take four years for a lot of reasons. Uh, very thankful that Color Me Gone put me on the road uh, to a lot of different places, a lot of different uh, venues. And, uh, including Germany. Including Germany, getting a lot, you know, Germany, and we're, it's starting to spread it around. Uh, so what's that about? Like, because you're a huge star in Germany, like you tour there all the time. Charlie Hasselhoff. Charlie Hasselhoff! <laughs> oh my God, that's see because David Hasselhoff yeah. is massive over there. Yeah. No but Dazel, David Hasselhoff is cheesy, and you, my friend, are far from. I am the anti-cheese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, let's clarify, because... Your comedy is a little cheesy. It is a little cheesy. But your music is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So big following over there. It, yeah, actually, it was, uh, it was amazing. So I remember the first time I went over there and uh, played, the very first club I played in Hamburg. And we get on the, we get on the stage and we're prepped. Like, we're, the sound checker was smoking. We're all ready to go. And then uh, the crowd shows up. And the place is packed. It's like, you know, four or 500 people in this really small tight club in downtown Hamburg. And, and that was, that was the name of the club, it was Downtown Blues Club. And uh, walk on stage, and I'm all ready to go, and we rip into the first tune, No Holds Barred, and I look at the audience, and nobody's moving. Nobody is, there. they got their arms no crossed, they may have a drink, no, 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 no toast half, no nothing. And I thought, well, this will probably be the last time I ever come here. <laughs> You know, I thought uh, I thought we were done for, and that we'd be packing our bags and going home the next day. We finished the song, and the place exploded. They just erupted, and it, I clued in that I thought, ah, oh, this makes sense that that English it, as a second language. Uh, you know, they they the, the German fans they really want to they put in that extra effort just to make sure that they understand it as as well as singing to North American oh, fans who just understand it by second nature. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they're so intense and they're looking at you, almost peering through you, they're looking at you so hard. And once I locked onto that, once I realized that, it was, okay, now we, we can, you know, the pressure's Sweet. off, we can just, yes. I know that they were having a good time because they were so fixated on, on Understanding you. Under, understanding what this cowboy was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure, wait. Yeah. 